twisted sister in the house. How are you? What's happening? Beautiful. I mean, what's it like when you, you know, create a band or make music, and so many years later, people still want to hear it. They still want to relive those moments. Do you know who Twisted Sister is? I do. Do you know what the songs are? I know the songs. What do you think? That's it. Those songs are part of your DNA. Absolutely. That's you why know? we still play them. You, you, you want to relive that, whether it be, you know, whether you were eight or... 26 We're essentially an oldies band. We play all the old stuff because that's what everybody grew up on. And that's what the new, younger people want to hear. That's why we play it. Tell us about joining the band, how that move happened. Yeah, you really want to get into that, I huh? I do. <laughs> well, I was actually working with Twisted Sister. I, had, I wasn't in the band at the time. I left the Dictators in, the, in the, the, I guess, late winter 78, helped twist it out with some tour managing and stuff. They were a club band at the time. And uh, one day I got a call from J.J. French, and he said, Kenny quit. He was the bass player at the time. You want to do it? I said, yup. Hung up the phone. I'm like, what was that? I had to call him back. I said, what are you talking about? He goes, yeah, can he quit? We need a bass player. You know all the songs. So you can just step right in. So I did. Wow. Well, let's go back real quick. The Dictators, that awesome band. I know it was tough to break through to that whole big level, but still people love those songs over the time. Tell us about playing in the Dictators. What were the highlights for you? Well, I'll tell you what. The Dictators, I was really young when I joined the Dictators. I was 19, freshly out of high school. And I got to go on, I'm 19 years old, go on the road with a big band, tour the world. World. Played with Kiss, CZ Top, I mean, you name it, every band back then, don't ask me how, Voice to Cult, um, it, just, it was an enormous amount of bands, we were constantly on the road for two and a half years, it was great, what an experience to be so young, and be in the heyday of touring, you know, because Led Zeppelin was still on the road, all kinds of cool things were happening, you know, so, yeah, it, it, that was an amazing event, two and a half years shaped my life. That's amazing, yeah. what advice would you give that young bass player, that young band coming up today? What advice? Yeah. What do they got to do to stand out? Find some way other way to make a living because music sucks. <laughs> no, but always have something life. to fall back on. You know, it's like playing lotto. It's like gambling. It, it, you, it just craps you if you make it to the point where you can rely on. Have a you know, plan to keep knocking at it. Don't, but you, don't make no, it a one Never stop. Deal. Never stop. But always have something to fall back on because now you, you don't know if you're going to be as lucky as somebody else who's made it. Yeah. The tough, it's, it gets tougher all the time. We have no record industry left. There's no A&R people. There's no tour support. So the younger bands, the older people coming up now, are going to have to reinvent a way to make a CD or make music and get it out there, you know. I mean, right now we have iTunes and all the downloading. That's not the answer. It's got to be a way to get stuff out there and so people get to know bands because you download one song, you don't see the artwork, you don't see anything. In the days when we were growing up, you had no albums, you had all the lyrics, you had all the pictures, yeah, you had gate everything. Fold, cover. And that's always important to me. These people are growing up these days and not getting all of that important yeah. element. Yeah. Life is such a throwaway thing. You know, everything's so disposable, you don't get that anymore. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. Bring music back to that element where you get everything and you get pictures of the band, you get all the lyrics and you understand what's going on. Not yeah. just one song. Yeah. But we live in America, in the United States, we're a very disposable society and everything is here and gone. Yeah. Yeah. Now, with the makeup and the shock value, any hesitation? I mean, obviously people can debate that for hours, but obviously you got people's attention. But tell us about how crazy that was at the time, coming out that shocking. Well, we went from a shocking club band to concert stages. I'll tell you, one of the one of the most unnerving times we ever had is Motorhead gave us a, a chance to open up for them in England, and uh, we were going on in daylight. We'd never done it before, and we are forever indebted to Lemmy because he went on on stage and introduced introduced us and said, "These are some of my best friends from America and Twisted Sister, and you better like them." You know, and we blew the place away. I mean, we gave a Twisted Sister show, but he really broke the ice for us. And you know, these days. We don't wear any of the costumes and makeup anymore. Yeah. You know, it's all gone. And believe it, people, we have more people because I think it turned some people off. But when we took it off a few years ago, nobody said, we had one email that said, why'd you take the makeup off? Right. So we do it without it. It's certainly easier, you know, <laughs> uh, but that's definitely an aspect, a part of Twisted Sister's heritage in our history. Yeah. Was there a, just a shocking story? I mean, an audience that you, you came out to or so, something with, with the makeup that was just like. It, it, well, that was the 
a shocking one. I mean, we never go on in daylight. It's, yeah. it's daylight, you know, yeah. in, in England. I can't remember where it was. It was an outdoor, big outdoor right. festival. Motorhead was headlining. W and was it dripping sweat? No. Oh, yeah, we were soaked in sweat. And, we, you know, I got to say, for the first time, the band was nervous because when you see us on stage, we're never nervous. There's no butterflies. There's no anything. We get up there, we kick ass, and we're the best football team in the world, what we do. Yeah. So that was the one gig I would say that was a little bit uh, a little edgy and stuff. Wow, it's beautiful. And and again, for an artist coming up today, um, there are no record labels. Tell them a little DIY story, why it's important for them to get their own music out there and set, stop waiting for somebody else to do it for All them. Right. Well, I want to say that the downloading syndrome and the disposable bit in our society killed the record industry. That part of it did. The record industry was their own worst nightmare. All the greed and all the executives and all that stuff. Because people people thought that like there's industries that are gone, but you realize the record industry failed in the last 10 years, and you're talking about 400,000 people out of work. Nobody ever talks about that. You never see it anywhere, but that's the case. Just think of it. Everybody from the office people, the secretaries, yeah. right up to the A&R people and, and middle management, but all the execs, they all made their money. Off. They all made their money and jumped ship and took off. So. Yeah, Profit that, to a few and, and heartache and to many. it's all gone. The record industry from the 60s and 70s and early 80s is completely gone. It's gone. I mean, it's very little that exists anymore.